So this is Sinus 912 motor glider. Uh, it has a wingspan of 15 meters. The maximum olive weight is 550 kgs. Fully composite construction. We will show you how we carry out a daily inspection, how we carry out a, an engine ground run, how do we release the aircraft, how do we ensure ourselves before releasing the aircraft that the aircraft is airworthy. At the same time, in addition to the daily inspection and the engine ground run, we are also going to show you how we carry out an engine compression test. Engine compression test is a very important test which is to be performed every 100 hours of inspection. This particular inspection gives us the confidence that our engine is in a healthy condition, is in a condition to generate sufficient power. So we will now show you how we carry out a daily inspection. We will remove the cowlings of the engine. We will carry out an engine inspection and the airframe inspection followed with by an engine ground run. So we will check the oil level in the oil tank. This is the oil tank. We remove the oil tank cap. The propeller has to be rotated several times in the direction of engine rotation so that the oil in the engine gets back to the oil tank. And once we rotate the propeller several on several rotations, we will listen a murmuring sound in the oil tank. Once that sound is heard, we can be sure that we will be able to read the correct level of oil in the oil tank. So we will show you how the oil level is checked. Uh, please turn the propeller. So you can see that we are going to turn the propeller several rotations and The propeller is being turned. We are turning the propeller in the direction of engine rotation. You can see the propeller is being turned anti-clockwise. And we are waiting for the sound to come. The oil which is there in the oil tank will flow back to... The oil which is there in the engine will flow back to the oil tank. And Gradually, you will listen a murmuring sound. You can listen this sound now. Now we are sure that the oil which was there in the oil in the engine has returned to the oil tank. And see, this is the oil dipstick. In order to be sure that you get the correct oil level, we will we have. We are seeing this uh, oil dipstick. You can see this is the minimum mark and this is the maximum mark. For normal conditions, your oil level should be somewhere in between the minimum and maximum mark. The minimum level is 2 liters and the maximum level is 3 liters. So, we will see that what is our oil level. I have put the dipstick inside the oil tank. You see, you can see here, very well see that the oil is in between the two marks. This is the minimum mark, this is the maximum mark. So the oil is somewhere here. The oil level is somewhere here. So our oil, we have sufficient quantity of oil in the oil tank, now we are sure. So we put the dipstick back and we'll put the cap again. So now the oil tank cap is there. So we are now sure that uh, we have sufficient oil in the oil tank. Another thing which is to be observed is the level of the coolant in the coolant bottle. You can see this is the coolant bottle. We have antifreeze coolant in this. So this is the minimum mark and this is the maximum mark. Now since the engine has not been uh, run at the moment, the engine we have a, a cold engine at the moment. So the coolant level is at the minimum mark. Once the engine is hot, once the ground run has been done, then this coolant level will come to the center mark in between. It will be in between the minimum and the maximum mark. It will be somewhere here. So before doing the ground run, 
Before, uh, during our daily inspection, we ensure that the coolant is at the minimum mark. So at the moment, we can see, you can see a pinkish color liquid inside this bottle. You, this is a coolant, antifreeze coolant, which is at the minimum mark. After this, we will do a ground run. Post ground run, we will remove this cowling and do a proper engine inspection. So uh, these are the two checks mainly which we do before doing the ground run. And another thing very important which we have to uh, ensure is the what, uh, fuel sample. We will drain fuel from the gas collector and we will ensure that the fuel is free of moisture. And once we are sure that we have a proper fuel sample, we have uh, fuel which is free of moisture, plus we have proper coolant, we have proper oil in, in the oil tank, then we can go for a, an engine ground run. We will just show you how we carry out a proper uh, fuel sampling check. So now we are going to take the fuel sample. The, this, is, uh, this is the, you can see this is, the fuel is coming out of the lowest point. We are taking the sample here. We have cleaned the bottle. You can see the bottle is being cleaned and the fuel is draining from the gas collector. Close. So you can see the fuel here. We have checked the fuel sample. We are checking it. We are seeing whether there are any sediments or there or so I can see that we have a proper clear sample, no sediments I can see. Plus we have put a paste also here. You can see there is a water finding paste here. In case if there is any moisture, this paste will turn pink, pink in color. Since the paste is, has not turned pink in color, so I am very sure that my fuel is free of moisture. So with proper fuel sample, proper oil in the tanks and proper coolant level, I am pretty sure now that I can give a proper engine ground run and post ground run with all the parameters normal, I will remove the cowlings and do a, a daily inspection, a visual inspection on for the engine parts and for the complete airframe part. And once the inspection is done, once everything is fine, I will put the cowlings back and release the aircraft for flight. So. Let us go and uh, do a ground run. Okay, so uh, before getting into the airplane, uh, you can see this red lever. I'll turn this red lever. This is for connecting the battery. You can see this is the battery here. So I'll turn this lever so that the battery gets connected. You can see I have turned this lever. Now this lever has gone on the other side. Now the battery is connected. and now we will get in the inside this sinus 912 motor glider and we will start the engine so now we are inside this sinus 912 motor glider uh, this is the key for this glider uh, this is the ignition switch this is your choke lever this is your throttle lever these are your magneto switches we have a MFD multifunctional display where you can see different temperatures here. This is your fuel quantity. This is your RPM. This is your manifold pressure gauge. So then this is your water temperature gauge. So during the ground run, we will be observing the RPM, the manifold pressure and the different temperatures. So I am putting this ignition key in this ignition switch, you can see I have taken a bit of choke, I am putting this key in the on condition, you can see this light that means your key is connected, I put these two switches magneto switches to on condition and this is the starter switch so 
I'll press this starter switch with the mag with the two magneto switches on. Starter engage, and you will see that your engine will start. So now I am pressing this starter switch. You can see now the engine has started. Now see the RPM. RPM has come to 1460, 1480. Now I'm gradually increasing the RPM. I'm increasing this throttle. I'm increasing this throttle, moving this throttle forward. You can see I'm moving this throttle forward. And now you can see the RPM increasing. I'll increase the RPM to 2500. You can see the RPM gradually increasing to 2500. So now the RPM is at 2500. We will hold the RPM at this point and wait for the oil temperature to come to 50 degrees centigrade. You can see the oil is at the 42 temperature, 42 degrees centigrade. So I'll wait, I'll hold it at this point so that my oil temperature is 50 degrees centigrade and my CHT, that is the cylinder head temperature, comes to 80 degrees centigrade. You can see the manifold pressure here. This is your water temperature. So we will have to hold at this point, we will hold the RPM to 2500 so that the temperatures come in the proper range you can see the oil is at the moment is 43 degrees centigrade only have to hold the RPM to 2500 CHT is 64 oil is 44 oil temperature is gradually increasing we will wait at this RPM we'll hold at this RPM of 2500 till the oil temperature is 50 degrees centigrade and CHT is 80 degrees centigrade CHT 67 oil 44 Oil 45 CHT 68 You can see CHT at 68 Oil at 45 CHT has come to 70, 71, oil has 47. CHT 72, oil is 49, you can see oil at 49. Oil is now 52, but we will wait for a few more seconds so that the CHT is also at 80 degrees centigrade. See, cylinder head temperature, CHT is now 63, oil is 53.
So now the CHT is 79 degree centigrade, oil is at 58 degree centigrade and now gradually we will increase the RPM to 4000. See CHT is already now at 80 degree centigrade, oil is at 60. Now I am going to gradually increase the RPM to 4000 and then we will check the magneto drop. So here we go and I am gradually increasing RPM, you can watch the RPM increasing. See the RPM is increasing now, it is, it is now 31, 33, you can see here RPM. RPM is gradually increasing. RPM now it is at 4000 now I'll check the magnetic drop with the RPM at 4000 I'll put the right magneto in the off condition see and look for the magneto drop now I put it in that I'm going to put it in the off condition right magneto see the RPM drop has come to 3860, 3820 and you can see from 4000 it went to 3800 that means a drop of 200 RPM with right magneto in the off condition. Now I am going to do the left magneto in the off condition. Before doing that, I have to stabilize the RPM to 4000. See the RPM is 4000, now I am going to do it. RPM, since RPM is now coming to 4000, I will put the left magneto drop here and now you can watch for the RPM drop, it is coming to 3820. So, <coughs> you can see there was a drop of 180 rpm on the left magneto and 200 rpm drop on the right magneto so which is well within the range now with the magneto drop in the normal range in the satisfactory range i am going to give a full throttle and check the max rpm and the manifold pressure here so now here we go i am going to gradually increase the throttle and look out, look for the rpm increase RPM increasing gradually. See the RPM gradually increasing, moving towards the maximum level. <coughs> you can see the throttle, see the throttle, see the throttle, I am moving the throttle at the maximum level, so you can watch the throttle, throttle is at the maximum and you can watch the RPM, RPM is at the maximum level, 5320, the manifold pressure at 30, you can look at the manifold pressure at the 30 and the RPM is 5340, now I am going to gradually reduce RPM now, RPM gradually coming down, RPM is gradually coming down, 
I'm reducing throttle, I'm reducing throttle and you can see the RPM has gradually come down. Now, with the RPM at the idle position, you can see the throttle in the idle range, throttle in the idle range and RPM at the minimum level, 1800, you can see now with the RPM also at the minimum level, 1800, I can see that my all parameters are within the range. So now I am going to switch off. So with this ignition key, I will put it in the off condition. Now with the ignition key off, the engine is shut off and we put the magneto switches off. So this was the ground run for on this size 912 motor glider. So I have seen all the parameters were in the normal range with the RPM, with the manifold pressure, the water temperature, everything was within the proper normal range. So I am pretty sure now that my aircraft, my engine is safe for operation. All parameters are within the range. Now I will put the engine cowlings down and do a proper inspection of the engine, look for the fuel leaks, look for oil leaks and <clears throat> after that I will do the airframe inspection and once the engine inspection and airframe inspection is satisfactory then we will release the aircraft for further flights. Thank you. So uh, we have just carried out the engine ground run, we have removed the engine cowlings, you can see now the engine is without the cowlings. Uh, this is, as we told earlier, this is your water coolant bottle. Now after the ground run, after the engine is hot, you can see the water level has risen. It is somewhere in between the minimum and the maximum marks. So the coolant is at the proper level. Now we will do a proper engine inspection as per the daily inspection schedule. This is my daily inspection schedule. Uh, you see uh, the first point is check cooling fluid level is halfway to the top. Okay, it is already at halfway. Check throttle choke and oil pump wires for no mechanical damage, smooth and unobstructed movement. So these are the throttle wires and the choke wires. You see the wires, they are proper. No damage is there. I can see there is no damage. They are properly, securely attached. They are properly attached. You can see the movement. You see uh, we are moving the throttle from inside the cabin. So you see the movement. is pro There is a proper movement there. You can see the throttle movement. The throttle is touching against the stops and on both the stops it is touching see this side and that side both side so similarly we check it for the other carburetor there are two carburetors in this engine this is a rotex 912 engine the one carburetor on the left side one carburetor on the right side so i have seen the cables we, have, we are inspecting the cables this is the throttle cable this is the choke cable uh, the cables are properly securely attached no damage to the cables that the Throttle on moving the throttle from the cabin, I can see the throttle is touching both the stops. And similarly, uh, same inspection is to be done on the right carburetor. Then you see the check radiators and hoses for no mechanical damage and or leakage and air filters are clean and intact. You can see just behind the carburetor there is an air filter. On both, both the carburetors there is an air filter. We see that the air filter is securely attached. It is proper, it is proper there. The air filters are clean, there is no dirt. So the air filters are clean. I can see the air filters are properly, properly attached. They are clean. So the air filters are securely attached and they are clean. Then the radiator hoses, the radiator hoses, you can see this is the radiator, the hoses, they are securely attached. No damage is there. I can see the hoses, it is properly attached. No, ho no damage. So, and the radiator is also securely attached. So then you check the exhaust pipes and collectors are firmly in position. There are no cracks, spring is intact and is in position and rubber dampers are intact. So you uh, see that the exhaust, you can see the exhaust here, the exhaust, you can see this is the exhaust system here, the exhaust pipes, all are securely attached. You can see the springs here, the springs are securely attached. You can see this is your exhaust system. All, all things are securely attached. I can, I can look for all uh, the adjacent areas plus the security of attachment. Everything is intact. 
So my exhaust system is proper. Similarly, similar inspection has to be done on the right side. On the left side, uh, this is the left side and similar inspection has to be done on the right side. So your exhaust system is also okay. Check for eventual fuel and or oil leakage. There should be no spots on hoses, engine housing or engine covers. So I will, since the ground run has already been done, you, you can see that there is no fuel leak, no oil leak here. The engine is completely dry and the engine is in proper order. No oil leaks are observed. So this is perfectly okay. So inspect for tight fit of oil filter installed on the engine. This is the oil filter you can see. The oil filter, there is no leak at the bottom of the oil filter. Oil filter is secure, secured, it is properly wire locked and it is in place. So oil filter is also okay. Then you check the engine mount for condition and cracks. This is your engine mount. You can see there are rubber dampers here, rubber blocks here. So I, I have to see <coughs> the rubber blocks, whether they are damaged or they are perfectly okay. I can see them, they are perfectly okay, they are secured, the bolts are there in place with, with safety threads outside and the creep marks also in place. So you can see here, the, 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 there are four points where you have the rubber blocks, the rubber blocks are, are in place, they are in order. Plus this engine mount which is attached to the firewall, I have to see the bolts attachment here, the threads, you have the safety threads out, you have the creep marks in place. and Similar attachment, you can see this, this one point, there's another point at the top. You can see there is another second attachment there the, on the firewall. The first attachment, this bottom attachment, similarly two attachments on the right side. You can see the two attachments on the right side. So I have to check all the bolts. The bolts are in place, the safety threads are out, the creep marks are in place. Similarly, the rubber blocks you saw them two at the bottom, one in the left side, one in the right side and two at the top, one in the left side and one in the right side. You have to watch, you have to see that your rubber blocks are not damaged, they are in place. Your bolts, they are, your bolts, they, they, you have the safety threads here. See the rubber blocks here, they should not be damaged, they should be in place, properly in place. Your bolts, safety threads should be out. The creep marks should be there. So I see that everything is perfectly fine as far as the engine mounting and the rubber dampers are concerned. So everything is okay. We have just now seen the exhaust system also. Now you can see the exhaust system right from the front also. You can see it is securely attached. No cracks, nothing. The springs are in place and you can hear the sound also. Perfect sound, no cracks, nothing. So my exhaust system is also perfectly okay. So I have seen, I have inspected my exhaust system also. I've seen the engine mounting also, the rubber dampers also, the <coughs> radiator hoses also, the throttle connections, the choke connections and everything. Plus in general, a visual inspection also has been done of the complete engine. And I find that my engine is perfectly okay, safe for further flight. And you can see no, no oil leaks here. Oil, this, this is the oil filter, you don't see any leaks here, all, all my connections are perfectly in place. Apart from the, apart from the uh, main components, you have, to give a, you have to look for a general inspection of all the parts, whether it is called for or not in the daily inspection. These are the minimum points to be inspected, but in addition to this, you need to inspect all other adjacent areas, whatever you can do, see whatever you can do a visual inspection so it is always better to do a, a complete inspection of the parts in addition to whatever is mentioned in your schedule so as per as per my this inspection i see the engine is perfectly in place is perfectly safe for flight i have seen in the ground run also the parameters are completely normal so i will now put the cowlings back in place and do a proper airframe inspection and then release the aircraft for flight. So we have just checked the engine. Now coming to the propeller, you can see that this is the spinner. This is your propeller. The, check the propeller spinner for security of attachment. You can see all the screws are in place. These are the screws. The spinner is properly attached. There is no damage. I, I can't see any damage on the spinner. Spinner is perfectly in place. Then 
look for the propeller blades, the propeller blade leading edges. The leading edge is perfectly okay. There is no damage on the propeller. So propeller, both blades, you need to inspect the leading edges. The leading edge of this blade is also perfectly okay. No damage, nothing. And your propeller is perfectly okay. Then you come and see the attachment, the propeller attachment here. You can see the propeller attachment, the bolts here, which attach the propeller to the crankcase. You can see this, these are the propeller bolt attachments. They are perfect. You can see the safety threads out, the creep marks are in place. So my propeller is securely attached. Now I'll see, I'll turn this propeller, I'll check the propeller pitch. That propeller is, there's no obstruction in the movement. So I, I'm looking for any obstruction. No, there's nothing, it is perfectly okay. It is a smooth, I can, I'm moving the blades, I'm moving the pitch. I'm varying the pitch of the propeller and I can find that this there is a smooth movement. Propeller is perfectly in place. So as far as the propeller and the spinners are concerned, I find that they are perfectly okay. So we have already done the engine inspection, the propeller inspection. Then we come to the undercarriage and wheels. You can see that this is your main landing gear. This is a fixed landing gear. So this is your main undercarriage, main landing gear. We check the bolts attaching the landing gear to the fuselage. There are two bolts here. I can see the bolts. You, I have the safety threads out, proper safety threads and the proper creep mark. My landing gear is perfectly fine, no damage. I look for the wheel assembly, the tire, the tire is proper and no damage. I can see the hydraulic line for the brakes. There is no leakage here. Everything is perfect. So this is your tire, tire I can see there is no damage in the tire, the, the hydraulic line to the brakes, this is also okay, no damage, no leakage, nothing, the brakes are in place. So <clears throat> on the left side, my main landing gear as well as the tire and the wheels, they are perfectly okay. So there is similar inspection has to be done on the right side, I'll also check the tire pressure and for the three wheels, the two main wheels and the nose wheel. So the tire pressure and uh, once that we see that the tire pressure is okay, so the landing gear is okay for the flight. We will check the tire pressure in this left main wheel. We'll put the gauge, this is the tire pressure gauge, you can see, and the manufacturer has advised us to have a pressure of 32 PSI. The pressure is slightly less, it is 31 and a half PSI at the moment. and uh, Actually, it should be 32 PSI. So we will replenish the pressure to 32 PSI. Similarly, the pressure has to be checked on the right main wheel as well as the nose wheel. For the nose wheel, the pressure as per the manufacturer has to be 28 PSI and the two main wheels, the pressure has to be 32 PSI. So after doing the engine inspection, the propeller inspection, the landing gear inspection, now we have come to the wings. You can see uh, we check the wings leading edge there should be no damage, no obstruction here. You can see the wing leading edge. I can see the attachment, the wing leading edge, plus the wing attachment to the fuselage. This is perfect, no damage. This is your fuel tank cap. We check the tightness of the fuel tank cap. The fuel tank cap is tight. I'm looking for any obstruction, any damage on the wing leading edge. I don't see any damage here in the wing leading edge. So my wing leading edge is perfectly okay. The wing tips are perfect in place. I check my wing attachment. I can find the wings are securely attached. Coming to the trailing edge, this is your flapper on. This plane, this plane has got flaps and ailerons combined into one. This is a flapper on. And I look for the any binding in the motion. You can see I'm moving the surface, so perfectly smooth surface, no obstruction, no binding and so my aileron and the flap, that is the flapper on, the connections, the cables, they are secured, they are properly in place. The trailing edge is perfect, 
no damage coming to this you can see the antenna here the ELT antenna the antenna is securely attached and then I look for the fuselage any damage this is the composite structure so no rivets in place but again the structure is smooth there is no damage everything is perfect I now we are come to the tail plane you can see the vertical stabilizer the vertical stabilizer leading edge is perfect no damage nothing I'm looking for any any damage anything there's nothing now this is your rudder the rudder surface on the left side this is also perfect no issues now on the horizontal stabilizer this is your horizontal stabilizer the leading edge of the horizontal stabilizer this is also okay perfectly fine no damage nothing this is your elevator I am looking for any binding in the in the surface no binding the surface movement is perfectly okay these are your hinge points these are your attachments they are secured they are properly attached you can see the attachments here they are perfect in place no issues this is your rudder the rudder trailing edge the rudder trailing edge is also okay the rudder attachments you can see the cable the cable coming which attaches the rudder here one attachment on the left side and one attachment similarly on the right side so I'll look for the rudder movement also and see whether my rudder is movement is okay or not so I can see that my rudder I'm moving the rudder left and right and I can see that rudder is smooth there is no obstruction in the movement of my control surface so rudder is okay elevator is okay on the right side also the trailing edge of the elevator this is also okay no issues the surface is perfectly fine so I've checked my tail plane the vertical stabilizer the horizontal stabilizer the rudder the elevator this is all okay I've checked for the general appearance damage for the leading edge trailing edge the complete surface since this is a composite construction there is no damage in the surface nothing the, there is no binding in the movement of the of the surfaces so I can see there's that my tail plane is perfectly okay then there is a there is a one attachment at the top which attaches your horizontal stabilizer to the vertical stabilizer so I will check for that attachment also for that I need to put the tail plane in this down condition and you can see here there is one one attachment here we see this this thing I, I need to remove this cap so I've removed this cap you can see this this attachment you can see it inside there is a there is a one hexagonal bolt here and the check is that that the two flats of the hexagonal of the hexagonal bolt have to align with the two blocks on the left and the right side if the two flats the hexagonal flats they are in line with the two blocks on the left and the right side they are perfectly in line then your attachment is perfect and your tail plane is securely attached so in addition to seeing this I also see for any any play in the attachment or anything any looseness or any play so I, I cannot see any play I cannot see any loose loose connection so my tail plane is securely attached my horizontal stabilizer is perfectly attached to the vertical stabilizer so after see, doing this inspection I have covered this hole with the cover so once the tail plane inspection is done I again go for the on the right side look for the fuselage fuselage uh, is perfectly okay no damages nothing my antennas are securely attached again this plaperon on the right side no no obstruction in the movement perfect smooth movement the trailing edge is again okay I can see the trailing edge there is no no damage in the trailing edge of the plaperon and the wing again you can see the winglet the attachment of the right wing to the fuselage it's perfectly attached and then you come to the leading edge of the right right side and 
I'm looking for any damage, any obstruction. I don't see any obstruction, any damage anywhere in the right side also. This is my pitot cover. This is, I remove the pitot cover here. You can see the pitot tube. The pitot tube is perfectly in place. It is there, it's securely attached and my holes are clear. So pitot tube is also in order. Similarly, again on the leading edge, it's all perfectly fine. The ca tank cap is tight, it is securely attached and this is your wing attachment, right wing attachment to the fuselage. This is also in place. I can see the my hinges also. The door hinges, they are secured, they are proper. Again, you see the landing gear at, uh, bolt attachments. You can see, we had seen it on the left side. Now we can see it in the right side also. You can see the bolts are securely attached. Your landing gear on the right side is also proper, no damage, nothing. So your right landing gear is also okay. Your tire is also okay. There is no leak in the hydraulic line, on the hydraulic brake line. Your wheels, your hubs, everything is perfectly okay. So you have inspected on the left side also as well as on the right side. So uh, now we are going to do an engine compression check on Rotex 912 engine. This is a Rotex 912 engine installed on Sinus 912 motor glider. This is your cylinder number one, cylinder number three. Similarly on the this side, similar cylinder number two and cylinder number four. So this is your spark plug. We have removed the spark plug connector. This is your spark plug connector. We have removed the spark plug connector here. We are going to remove the spark plug and we'll check the compression for this cylinder. So please remove the spark plug. So you can see the spark plug is being removed. We are removing the spark plug here. This is cylinder number one. The spark plug has been loosened and it is now being removed. So with, the, with this spark plug out, you can see this spark plug for cylinder number one. With this out, now we are going to put an adapter here. And uh, before putting that adapter, we need to see that your piston in this cylinder number one is at proper place. It should be somewhere near TDC. This is cylinder number one. First, we have to see that the piston in the cylinder is at the compression stroke and for that, we have to turn the propeller. We will place our finger and experience the pressure, the pressure which is exerted on the finger on the outside. We will experience that pressure and through that, we will come to know that the piston is in the compression stroke. We are gradually moving the propeller. We are gradually moving the propeller in the direction of engine rotation and trying to feel the pressure at the, at the spark plug hole to see whether the piston is there in the compression stroke or not. So we need to ensure, we need to ensure that the piston is at the compression stroke. After getting the piston at the compression stroke, we need to ensure that the piston is at the right place at the TDC, that is the top dead center position. For doing that, for ensuring that the piston is in the compression stroke and at the TDC, we need to put our finger in the spark plug hole feel the pressure, the outside pressure on the finger and we will gradually turn the propeller in the direction of engine rotation. This is the direction of engine rotation anti-clockwise. We are gradually turning the propeller. So we have experienced, we have experienced with the outside pressure that the piston is at the compression stroke and we need to ensure that the piston is at the top dead center position, which is at the maximum position towards the spark plug hole. So we will slightly turn the propeller to see whether the piston is moving towards the spark plug hole or not. Yes, I can see that the piston has moved slightly towards the spark plug hole. Now it is the, at the maximum TDC position, top dead, cent, 
the position, and I'm now sure that this is the right position for us to check the compression. We will now put the adapter in the spark plug hole of cylinder number one. Inside the spark plug hole, you can see the, you can see the piston head there. It is just at the DDC, just at the proper place, so that we need to have a proper compression. Now we are putting another adapter. With this adapter in place, we are going to tighten this adapter and so with the adapter in place, we are now going to attach the differential compression tester to this adapter. Now you can see this, this is our differential comp compression tester. This is, this is the connection which we are going to put in this adapter and In this tester, you can see the two gauges. This is one. In this tester, you can see the two gauges. There are, this is your input gauge. This, this gauge will reflect the input pressure being given in. And this will reflect how much pressure is being held by the cylinder. So the two gauges, they will tell us. You can see the different range markings here, red, yellow, and green on this gauge. Initially, we will give 80 PSI pressure here. The 80 PSI pressure will be the input pressure, and we will see that how much amount of leakage is there in the cylinder. The generally, 20% of leakage is allowed, so we will watch out for the leakage in this cylinder number one. So we have already attached the adapter. We have already attached this connection, and we are going to give an input pressure. So we are going to give an input pressure. At the same time, there, have to be, there are to be certain precautions to be taken. You can see the propeller is being held. You can see the propeller is being held here. It is very, very essential that the propeller is securely attached is, and it is held by two people because we are giving an input pressure. And input pressure, if we don't hold the propeller properly, there are always chances of propeller firing. So someone has to hold the adapter here also. So just to take extra precautions, now we are going to give with this also adapter in place, we are gradually increasing the input pressure. You can see the input pressure. And the input pressure is being given as 80 PSI. You can see the needle. You can see the needle here. 80 PSI input pressure we have given. And you can see the amount of pressure inside the cylinder, we can read it is somewhere, somewhere, somewhere around 22%, 23%. And <coughs> in order to have a proper reading, we have to slightly rock the propeller. We need to we need to slightly rock the propeller. You can see the propeller here. We have rocked the propeller. So we have given the input pressure as 80 PSI. With this 80 here, this is, you can see the needle here at something around 21%. This is, this is 100 here. 100 minus 21, you can say the output pressure is around 79. So I have given an input pressure of 80 PSI. The output pressure I am getting is 79 percent, 79 PSI. So which is a very good figure. The, that means my cylinder one is properly holding the pressure. Now I will gradually reduce the pressure. Bring the pressure to zero. And I will reduce, remove this connector and remove the adapter from cylinder one. Similarly, we will do the compression check for cylinder number three. Yep. So you see, we are removing the spark plug now, sorry. 
the spark plug of cylinder number three. So this is the spark plug for cylinder number three. I can see the spark plug is also dry and uh, not much of dirt. So now we will see the piston position in cylinder number three. Again, the same procedure, the propeller has to be turned and we are going to feel the pressure by putting the thumb there at the spark plug hole and we are going to see the position of the piston at, again, at the TDC. Again, you can see inside the spark plug hole, I can see the piston position. It is properly in place. So I can see the piston position at spark plug, at the spark plug hole in cylinder number three. So with the piston in, at the proper place, I'll now again put the adapter in the hole in cylinder number three. Now the adapter is being tightened. Again, the differential compression tester will be fixed to this adapter. You can see the differential compression tester here. Again, we are going to put the adapter there. And again, you see, this is your gauge for input pressure. And here we will see the amount of pressure being held inside the cylinder. So gradually, again, the cylinder input pressure is being given. At the same time, you need to be sure that your propeller is being held firmly. So you can see the input pressure being given is 80 PSI. <coughs> we have given 80 PSI. And you see, initially, we have got, again, this is 100. So I'm getting something around 23, the needle is at 23 percent, so 100 minus 23 is 77 psi. So I'm getting 77 psi, I've given an input pressure of 80 psi and I can see my cylinder number 3 is holding 77 psi pressure. So generally the manufacturer, the Rotex company allows 25 percent of leakage, but I'm just getting a 3 percent drop, so my cylinder number 3 is perfectly okay. Now, gradually reducing the pressure to zero. Again, we are going to remove the adapter. And similarly, we will check the pressure, the, compress the cylinder pressure, the compression, the pressure being held by the cylinders in cylinder number two and four also. You can see the adapter is being removed from cylinder number three. With the adapter removed, now we will move to cylinder number two. Again, you can see we are at, this is cylinder number two, this is cylinder number four. We are removing the spark plug from cylinder number two. During the compression check, before starting the compression check, you have to be very careful. You have to allow the engine to cool down a bit. It should, be, it should not be very hot. It should not be cold also. So as to get the proper readings, again, the spark plug hole has, the spark plug has been removed. We will put the finger there, feel the pressure, feel the pressure and Again, you can see the propeller is being turned. This is being done so as to ensure that your piston is at the right position. Again, you have listened the sound. You can see the sound and we are going to check the position of the piston. You can see the position of the piston there. The position of the piston is there, right at the proper place. So again, we are going to put the adapter here 
and we will check the compression for cylinder number 2. So, you can see the adapter being put. So now the tester, you can see the tester is attached to the adapter. Again, the propeller is being held firmly. Before we give the input pressure, we have to be very sure that the propeller is held properly and we are going to give the input pressure. So again, you see the input pressure will be given. Look at the input pressure being given. So, the input pressure of 80 psi is being given. Now you see 80 psi and I can see my reading as my needle as at around 22 percent. So, that means 100 minus 22 is 78. So, with 80 psi input pressure, I am getting 78 psi pressure in the cylinder. So, my cylinder number 2 is well within the range. The compression figures are well within the range. Since 25 percent is uh, of leakage is allowed by the manufacturer, so it is just 2 psi leak. So, my cylinder number 2 is perfectly okay. Again, we are going to remove the adapter from cylinder number 2 and put it in cylinder number 4. So, you have seen in cylinder number 1, cylinder number 3, cylinder number 2, all the readings which we are getting, they are all well within the limits. I am just getting a 2 or 3 psi of leakage in the 3 cylinders. So, now I am going to check the 4th cylinder. The spark plug from the 4th cylinder, cylinder number 4 is being removed. While removing the spark plug also, we need to be very careful, we need to be very gentle with the spark plugs, otherwise there are always chances of the spark plug helicoils coming out. These are the helicoils there. There are always chances of the helicoils being getting damaged. So, we need to be very gentle with the spark plugs while, hold, while handling them. Again, we need to turn the propeller so as to ensure that my piston position in the cylinder is at the proper place. We have felt the pressure, we had put the finger in the spark plug hole, we have felt the pressure and now you can see I am gradually very gently turning the propeller and I can see the piston slightly moving towards the spark plug hole. Now, it is perfectly at the proper place. You can see inside the spark plug hole, the piston position, the piston is at the proper place. So, I can, I can feel the piston head with the finger and with the piston in at, a, at the proper place, I will again put the adapter. So, the adapter is there in place in the cylinder number 4. We will slightly tighten the adapter with the spanner. We do not tighten it much. Again, the differential compression tester has been attached to the adapter and we are again going to give the input pressure. Again, be very careful that your propeller is being held properly. See the input pressure 
gradually being given as ATP SI and here I can see my needle at 22 percent. So 100 minus 22 is 78 again <coughs> with an input pressure of 80 psi I am getting 78 psi. So my cylinder number 4 is holding pressure of 78 psi. So I can see that cylinder number 4 is also perfectly fine. This completes my compression check for the four cylinders. I have seen that on all the four cylinders my, my readings, my leakage, what we have seen is generally 2 to 3 percent, which is, which are very good figures, which ensures, which gives us the confidence that engine is in a very good condition, it is holding the pressure properly and it is, it is, it is in a condition to generate sufficient power for the flights. So we have just now carried out the compression check. Uh, it is fine, we have got uh, very good figures for, the, for this engine, but in case if the readings are low and if we are able to hear some hissing sound, some sound coming from the uh, breather or the oil filler tube. So you can suspect that there is a leakage in the pist near the piston or the rings. If you hear the sound, from the intake system, there may be a leakage in the intake system. If you are able to listen a sound from the exhaust system, that indicates that there is a leakage somewhere in the exhaust wall. So this compression check, this is a, this is a very important check, generally carried out every 100 hours for us to judge the health of the engine, that our piston, the rings, and everything is in proper order, they are, the engine is in healthy condition and engine is in a condition to generate sufficient power. We have seen uh, on Sinus 912, we had carried out a general daily inspection on the engine, on the airframe. We have carried out a ground run. You have seen how the engine is started, how do we check the various parameters of this engine. We have carried out an engine compression check, the, which is to be done every 100 hours, which is very important. This compression check is one of the most important checks to ensure that your engine is in a healthy condition. So after doing all these checks, the aircraft is released for further flights. Thank you.